Welcome to Export Kit. In this example, I will be demonstrating how you can incorporate CSS styles, which is a custom tag, within your design to basically now truly customize your output uh, to your requirements. So you can use CSS styles with, in essence, any elements uh, within your design. So to prove this, we're going to use them with a couple complex ones, such as uh, input text and also submits. Now. If we take a look at our design, you'll see what we have here is one of our typical forms. And within our forms, we have an input for submit, a password, and also text. Now, you'll also note that we've also added CSS styles. So we've pre-incorporated our styles on our elements. And you'll have to get familiar with our layer text to understand how to do this fully. But in essence, what we have is our tag is called uh, CSS. We have a property. Oh, one second, let me just highlight this so you can see it better. We have a property of style, and we've added password text. Sorry, this is a little bit cumbersome uh, due to the size. Let me just increase the size of the layer so we can see this better. So we have here a couple styles, and what these are reflective of are the CSS styles that we've created within our actual design, and you'll see them here. So what we have are individual styles that we've created, and let's just hop over to the design of them. And you can see here one is a simple color and a drop shadow, another is a gradient, and another is a solid color, as well as two font styles. Now, I've added the names of the actual styles beside them, but we're using a skip. Uh, this is, again, just visual purposes, just so in the design you understand what the names are. But in essence, you only need the layers to be reflective of the names. So you'll see as I'm clicking them uh, what it's selecting each time. So. Each of these names now will be reflective of the styles that we use. So we have here the submit button, which is reflective of this submit button. We have a password text reflective here. And we also have an input text. So these are the styles that we've added to the element. So I'm just going to go back and uh, increase the visual of the actual design. So what I'm going to do for argument's sake is we're going to basically change the name of this folder um, just so we can export it so you can see what it will originally look like and then we're going to reapply the name so that we can get the styles. So let's just go ahead and export this now. So you'll see visually you will see the styles in the output. And let's just open this. Okay, so you'll see here we have our text input, we have our password, and we have our submit. Now, the problem with this is that we've applied styles in the actual design, but we haven't applied the styles to the elements. And you can see the styles we have here, they rendered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop back to the design. And we're simply just going to undo what we did so that uh, we get the correct CSS styles folder. And we're just going to re-export now, what this will do is apply the CSS styles that we've created within the design to the actual elements. And then we're going to take a look at how we can optimize the CSS even further. So you'll see now what we have. Uh, and this is basically from our first concept to our secondary. We have the styles now applied to each of the actual input elements. Now, again, this will work with any HTML element that you create. We're using complex ones just to show you, you know, how diverse you can be. So what we'll notice off the bat is that the text does not match our actual design. Our design is using something substantially different. Now, this is because we didn't apply the font uh, styles. And you'll see right here we have input font and submit font. But if we go back and we look at the actual layers, you'll see that we only have input text. And we also have submit button. So let's just go ahead and add those additional styles. So you would do this similar to how you would do CSS classes. So let's put input font. Now, you will be limited to the number of characters you can use in your layer name. So try not to use extensively long uh, CSS classes. But you could, in essence, add as many as you can. So let's add input font here. And we also have a submit font. Let's actually change that to submit font. Now this will correctly render. And let's add submit font to the submit button. So what we've done here is we've now added uh, dual styles based on the design. So you'll see here we have a 
a couple of actual uh, effects for shapes and we have a couple effects for fonts themselves so we've added multiple styles to each element now and what we'll, this will do is render the multiple styles in the output so let's just go ahead and take a look at the output Now it's relevant where you store your CSS files. We could have as easily placed them on another artboard just for a better design, but this is just uh, for demonstration. So you'll see here what it did now was it actually rendered all the text uh, using the actual styles that we use. So if we go back, you'll notice that this is centered, but this text is left aligned. And this is simply because of our design. We did not center this text. So let's go ahead and do that and let's see how it changes in the output. Now again, this is all using styles rather than the individual elements. So this allows you to actually wireframe uh, your design and simply add styles in a global artboard. We're going to show in additional videos and you'll see here now it's centered. So this is a simple way to basically add a custom and complex CSS styles to your design. Uh, in essence, you could again, uh, like I said previously, wireframe your entire design and add styles separately. So in another video, uh, I'm going to take a look at how to add complex styles so you can actually switch as well. And also how to create complex uh, elements such as a select with options. So you'll be able to see a drop down within a form itself. So again, CSS styles, simple, easy, Adobe XD, along with Export Kit.